Sides are back on. That's plus. I would uh, like to tell you that there was some, some trick to this or some magic, but there's not. You just put in a screw, go around the other side, get your pliers, move the wires around, put in another screw, move the wires around. The thing you want to be careful of, again, is bending the terminals all to, to heck. The wire is so much stiffer than those ring terminals or even the spade lugs on the bridge rectifier. So take your time, put in a couple of screws, make sure everything is, is where it's supposed to be, and you'll have no problems. The thing will bolt right on. There's, there's plenty of space. I did end up wrapping those screw connections in electrical tape. They weren't near anything. There was no chance they were going to short out. Just made me feel better to do it. The other side of the welder is completely unaltered. I have my blue tape patch on here for the holes that I didn't, I didn't mean to make. Uh, we'll see. I'll probably leave that there until the first time it catches fire. Overall, not a terribly difficult process to get these components in here. But in the end, we didn't do this for looks. We did it to get a better welder. So let's take it over to the welding table, AKA free plywood I found, and plug it in, make sure nothing blows up. And assuming all is well in the world, we'll lay down a few beads and see if what we did is worth the effort. Remember before when I said it was the moment of truth? I lied. This is the moment of truth. So I'm going to make absolutely sure that this thing is off, turned all the way down, whatever. And here goes nothing. 120 volt input power. Okay, so far success. No immediate sizzles. Let's make sure that the ground clamp and the torch are safely out of the way. Let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Nothing but fan, exactly what it ought to be. So um, we got it wired together at least well enough that it didn't self-destruct. Let's pull the trigger. Let's see what happens uh, with the new components in place. Let's see if it dies, if it blows up. Um, I don't think it's going to. More importantly, let's see what kind of bead we can lay down now that we have a DC electrode negative machine. This is it, no turning back now. I've got the machine set as low as it could possibly go. It's on minimum power, the wire speed is on zero. I did pull the trigger once or twice just to make sure that the wire feed roller is in fact still working, and it is, sounds the same as ever. I'm just gonna pull the trigger and see what happens. Now, I know that the power is too low, and the wire feed speed is way too low to actually weld. This is just the, is it gonna blow up test. So let's find out. Well, didn't blow up. My bead is crooked. My bead is crooked and sitting on top of the metal because it's turned all the way down. Uh, but, but, it had a decent coat of slag on it, and it definitely made a whole lot fewer BBs. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and turn this bad boy up to five. And let's try again. Okay, so I'm getting some little, little stutter steps in there, little pops and starts. Um, I don't, I can't tell if that's because the wire feed is not continuous or if again it's because the, the power is set way too low. I still have it on, on min, but I tell you what, I can tell already that this is doing substantially better. 
Uh, if you look on the back of the welds, the back of the welds, the back of the workpiece, you can see we actually have heat coming all the way through the, the metal. And if you look on the very end, you probably can't see that. But even on the minimum power setting, we have substantially better penetration than we had ever before. So let's go for broke here. Let's push the button and go to max power. I'm going to get myself a clean piece of wire here. Let's see what happens. Well, it still didn't blow up. That's a plus. I, I tell you what, that is a whole world hotter <laughs> than it ever used to be. I think we got a whole new welder, folks. On the right power settings, when you're not getting excited and going too fast like I did at the end, this thing makes a pretty nice speed. And I don't know if you can see on there or not, but look, look, Ma, no BBs. Maybe there one BB right there. For flux core, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, so just for grins, I'm going to turn this thing back up to where we had it in the introductory video series. I'm going to turn it up to just a little past number seven. And, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the handy dandy temperature sensor here. And let's get a, an ambient read on this thing. Looks like our diode is about 120 degrees after running those beads. And quite frankly, I think it's about 100 degrees out here in the shop. Anyway, we got it turned up a little bit more now. Let's see what happens, and then I'll check the temperature right after we're done. Grab the temp gun. Okay, I got 145 degrees, but it's dropping pretty rapidly. Um, nothing wrong with that. 100 and, 145 degrees isn't going to hurt that diode forever. So this, what a mess. <laughs> I, got, I got weld piled up on top of weld piled up on top of weld. But goes all the way through. So there's one eighth inch steel, which in theory would require about 120 amps, 125 amps to, uh, to weld effectively. But what can I tell you? I don't, it'd be nice to measure the, uh, the amperage coming out of here, but we got what we got. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I'm gonna run just a couple of more a couple of more beads on here, <laughs> run myself out of anything resembling metal to run a bead on. And then I'm going to take off all this hot safety stuff and we're going to have a little wrap up, see whether this is worth doing or not. <laughs> 